In this section, we'll be talking about ADHD treatment, specifically lifestyle changes and behavior modification strategies. An important study published several years back took children and divided them into three groups, behavior modification strategies alone, medication alone, and a third group having behavior modification strategies plus medications. The most effective treatment for ADHD was the combination group of behavior modification strategies and medication. A second group which was nearly as effective was medication alone, and then a more distant group having less effective treatment response were behavior modification strategies alone. Now this study il illustrates an important point. That is, first of all, behavior modification strategies work. The second point is that medications work better than behavior modification alone, but in combination is the best treatment. So let's start off by talking about behavior modification strategies. The first thing is parental training. One thing I always recommend to families in initiating a treatment plan for ADHD is implementing appropriate behavior modification strategies from the parents. It's going to be something like a positive reward system, a structured environment, consistent discipline, setting up a homework station that doesn't have a lot of dis distractions. This can be done in the doctor's office or as part of a more formal program. There are several programs here in the area that I refer to that have structured programs set up for parents in learning how to deal with children with ADHD. A second component to behavior modification strategies is individual psychotherapy. Where this is especially important is when children will report saying, you know, I could do this if I wanted to, I just don't feel like doing it. It's so boring to me. Uh, maybe I feel like I don't get it. Maybe I think I'm going to fail. And individual psychotherapy and maybe cognitive behavioral therapy, something along those lines can be helpful in looking at why children have struggles with doing their homework or other assignments and maybe producing some ADHD-like symptoms. A third area is working with an educational psychologist. So this can be really basic stuff, such as having something like a reminder binder, a checklist for children where they write down every homework assignment, um, they check off when they do it, and then they check off when they turn it in. This can be followed up by routine treatment with an educational psychologist and going over this in helping a child with their organizational skills. And then the last area are school special accommodations. Things like preferential seating up towards the front of the class, untimed tests, maybe even a special testing environment, extra set of textbooks for home, remote homework retrieval system, other special accommodations for the children at school. And this can be done in a formal way, say as part of an individualized educational plan, or especially in elementary school in an informal way, where a teacher knows the child's diagnosis and may give them preferential seating up towards the front of the class and try to give them an environment with fewer distractions and maybe extra time to take a test where there's not as many distractions. Some other lifestyle changes I'll talk about are the importance of sleep, and I might talk about something called sleep hygiene. So this is a very well-studied treatment for ADHD, is assuring adequacy of sleep. Many times in my office, I'll have children where I clean up their sleep habits, make a few other basic behavior modification strategies or lifestyle changes, and their ADHD symptoms will lessen considerably. So for most children, we need at least nine hours of sleep. For younger children, even nine to 10 hours. Many children with ADHD will report having difficulty falling asleep. So I'll talk about a concept called sleep hygiene discuss things like having quiet and calm activities in a dimly lit room for an hour before bed, maybe even some melatonin as a supplement to help children sleep, and when the sleep deprivation resolves, often the ADHD symptoms lessen. A second lifestyle change is, is essential fatty acid supplementation or fish oil supplementation. There's mixed evidence in the medical literature of how effective this is, but overall the evidence is strong for children 6 to 12 years old, especially with attention and distractibility problems for effectiveness of essential fatty acid supplementation. What I'll usually recommend is for children less than 5 years old, somewhere between 300 to 500 milligrams of DHA plus, A DHA plus EPA, the omega-3 fatty acids. For children 5 to 15 year olds, a little higher dose, somewhere between 500 and 1,000 mil milligrams. Another area I'll talk about are basic dietary changes. Nothing very restrictive, such as limiting gluten or casein, but just having a good protein-rich, calorie-dense breakfast in the morning time. I'll explain to families the importance of having a 
sustainable energy source for, for the brain, avoiding the blood sugar swings that may happen with a, a protein deficient sort of diet, but just very general recommendations of increasing protein in the morning time. In this next section, we'll be talking about specific medications for the treatment of ADHD.